Uh, welcome to episode eight or nine. Uh, I can't remember what it is on the CRF 450 rally build. Um, as you probably heard right now, things are not good between MST and ourselves. Um, it's unfortunate, but what can you do? You uh, you pay your money, you takes your chances. Unfortunately, uh, there's. Uh, I, I'm just going to leave it at there's better companies to deal with that you're not going to have to own a mill to install their kit. Um, and that's what I'm doing today. This is just, uh, I've just got it squared up. I've got it trued. Um, so what I'm doing is uh, a friend of mine cut this on the bandsaw for me. This is the raw piece that's going to go into uh, into the space where the key was supposed to travel through the key cylinder, but never did. Uh, I don't understand why they just couldn't build a bracket and relocate the key. But anyways, um, so that's what I'm doing here. Uh, I'm going to leave this on for a little bit uh, and try to figure out how to, how to speed it up. Unfortunately, this is just a little baby mill, so everything I do is, is uh, hand-fed. I don't have any power feeds on the, uh, on the mill. I do on my lathe, or on the lathe portion of that. That's up, up here, you can see up there. Um, so it's just a little, uh, little tiny machine that uh, is not the best, but it works. Um, so I'm just gonna grab my safety goggles, uh, safety first when doing this stuff, and uh, and we'll make some chips. So these first few passes are gonna be just to square it up. That's about a four thou drop in the tool head. And I'm just gonna bring it over so I'm only cutting on about a third of the head just to see how far we're gonna go with it. For this little guy, it's a fairly big cut. To a YouTube channel called Blondie Hacks. Um, I know which way I like to cut to get a, a better finish for the first time. Uh, you jump over to her channel and check out what she does. You, can, uh, you too can see if you're a home machinist like myself or semi like just teaching yourself the basics of machining. Uh, I highly suggest your channel. Here's one. To move on to doing, uh, we're going to square all four ends. 
and uh, then we will start measuring. And uh, I'll come back to you when everything's squared. So I guess I'm really bad at taking videos. Um, this is a completed block pretty close. Um, you can see we've got it center board all the way through. Um, I'm going to clean it up. The stock I had was just a bit narrower than, uh, than the piece from, uh, um, well, you know who. So <clears throat> that's that right now. Uh, my last operation is I'm actually going to countersink the Allen heads like these guys. Oh yeah, I cut myself tonight. Um, gonna do that and that'll be the last operation before I start cleaning up the block. It's just gonna have a sanded surface to it so it's uh, nice and clean and uh, then we'll go from there. So we're done building for the night. Um, what I did was I started with this block. Um, I brought it down to this. It's it's not very pretty yet. It's, it's just kind of cleaned up. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'll lay it up again and, and drill three holes through here so I can run uh, I can run zip ties through there. Um, just gives me a place to tie them that's convenient. Um, this, you can see that after they manufactured it, they machined here, I didn't do that. Um, but, so they needed to clean off the powder coat. What's really funny to me is that they didn't clean off the powder coat on the other side. Uh, it, it's kind of, it's one of those things that make you scratch your head. Uh, so this guy goes in here That was the only thing attaching it to the frame because this one went in here and Yeah, the threads are well, they're protruding a little bit differently um, but the big problem is is that they They cut this out I'm, I'm sure originally when they designed it in in whatever program they're using this was was connected to that so basically you know, the hole went all the way through. This hole, I didn't put there. Um, I just countersunk it. Yeah, I screwed up. I used too big of a countersink to start with. Um, but um, so, but I caught it and changed it. Um, so that's got powder coat in it because that's one of the original holes. You can see here where I've had to clean up the threads. I haven't done that yet here. So if you haven't seen one of these guys, that's not a tap. It's actually a thread chaser. So... What I do, and I've, I've chased this one before, is I just run it in with my 3 8 impact. The reason I run it in with a 3 8 impact is that's got a very low point of, of bitchiness of when it starts to ratchet. So I never cleaned out that bottom one. I put bolts in it, but I should have cleaned it out. So now you could see that when it went in the first time, it was, uh, it was cleaning powder coat out of there. And now that's that's uh, a lot cleaner, a lot better. So now um, we're just gonna throw this guy, oops, that guy in. Um, I, I'm kind of glad I did that because I, I come off a lot of the times sounding like I'm Mr. Jack know-it-all, and I am not, not by any sense of the imagination. I'm, I'm just a guy trying to make his motorcycle go down a, a, a rally course. Um, so these two go together here. The only reason that's machine fit is because they, uh, they left the powder coat on one side. So you can see where I actually had it together uh, and machined it as one because I, I, I wanted a true flat surface there. Um, this guy goes in here. Um, it's it's within a thou clearance. This is obviously, I haven't got the right bolt because I'm not putting it on the bike right now. I'm just using that as, as an alignment uh, tool. So this guy goes in here, this guy goes in here. I thought it was funny actually. These are the bolts they gave me. Um, I'm not sure why one is shorter than the other, but what are you gonna do? Um, it's, it's kind of funny in the last email that I got from them. They want, they want me to send the kit back at my cost. They want to put it on the bike and then send it back at my cost because they, they believe that it's all me and not them. 
So if you believe that, go ahead and buy from them. If you don't, buy from me. So, sorry, I just wanted to get everything lined up and that takes a little bit of, a little bit of uh, fiddling. So this actually comes down there. Um, what I'm trying to do is make sure that that's completely flush. The reason I want it completely flush and working together is that I'm, I'm trying to make this all one unit. Um, I'm kind of glad I, I lucked out and had uh, this guy a little bit smaller because it does give me a room, hopefully, to put a bead in there and weld this together. Um, I think that would be a, a better solution. This way is, is not too bad. You can see it's it's still loose in here because I haven't tightened it up yet. But now that that's sitting flush, um, so you can see that's just with my fingers on the on the uh, on the end of the T T bolt, and now it's you know it's still a little bit loose in there. But as soon as we tighten that up, now it's nice and solid. So. That's the way it's now going to go on the bike, is like this. Uh, like I say, if, if I'm brave enough to attempt it with a TIG, I'm first to admit I'm not great with a TIG. I am just going to put a little bit of bead in there to make sure it, uh, it doesn't move. And that way it really is locked together. And uh, if any of you have ever worked on truck frames, that's kind of like a fish joint. Um, so it, it should be nice and strong to hold it. and. Uh, for competition, we're prob I'm probably gonna, if I ever race this thing, which I, d I don't trust it right now, and um, I don't know anybody who's raced this kit, so I, I might be the first, I don't know. I hope not. If, uh, if you own one of these kits and have raced it, please let me know. Um, so, obviously the wrong bolt. We'll get it so the protrusion is, is equal to the uh, uh, equal to the the time cert that we have in the in the bike's frame um, but I'm kind of glad I got this done you can see between here and here or this height and where the bottom is I'm gonna have room for probably three six millimeter holes which uh, which will be nice um, I don't want to lose the integrity and I thought three holes might look nice there so um, that's about it for tonight's episode um, thanks for watching uh, please like and subscribe and uh, stay tuned for the next episode. Hey guys, um, everybody was wondering what this tower would weigh. I finally got it off the bike again to finish up the mount. This does not include the mount that goes onto the bike itself. As you can see, it's missing. Um, but just take it here. Set it on there gently. It works out to eight pounds, 3.6 ounces. which is also for us Canadians uh, is 3.73 kilos. So overall under 10 pounds. By the time I get everything on it though, it's gonna be over 10 pounds.